Hello, thank you for joining me here today at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura, and today's video I will be ranking the eight John Steinbeck books that I have read so far. So recently I went to Monterey County, you know, like Monterey, Pacific Grove, Salinas, that area where a lot of Steinbeck books take place. And he himself, you know, was born and raised in Salinas and he lived in Monterey. And so I went and visited there. And while I was there in preparation, I read a couple more of his books. And so I was just in a very Steinbeck mindset. And it was really cool seeing all of those locations. And I will be releasing a video showing, you know, the pictures and stuff from that trip. But before I release that video, I wanted to do this video where I rank the eight books I've read of his so far. I was gonna wait till I had read more books, but I'm kind of in a reading slump this past week, and so I don't know when I'll be finishing another one of his books, so I decided to just go ahead and film this with the eight that I have read. So here is my tier ranking, the bottom tier being Don't Waste Your Time. The next tier is a school curriculum must because a lot of Steinbeck books, like they're frequently read in high schools and in colleges. So that is the next one where it's at least something you should read in school. And then we have literary classic and then great American novel and the final one in the top tier being life will never be the same, meaning life will never be the same for you after you read this book because it is that good. And I'm just going to say right now, this bottom tier, don't waste your time. No books will be in that bottom tier. I have yet to read a Steinbeck book that I feel was a waste of time or that I think isn't worth it. Like I have loved all of his books. And so all like the bottom will be at least something that you should read in school, you know? So like I said, I've only read eight. He has more books than that, of course. So maybe at some point I'll come across one I don't particularly like, but it has yet to happen. And before I get into this, comment down below what is your favorite Steinbeck book, as well as what is your least favorite. If you do have one that you just did not like, comment down below and let me know. And I do have book first movie episodes for, I believe, four of these, including this first one, The Red Pony. My mom joined me for that episode, so that was really cool. She is a fellow Steinbeck fan. But The Red Pony, so this one is about a boy who it's like a series of short stories. It's like four short stories that all focus on this young boy and his life and his family living on this ranch farm in the Salinas Valley. And in the first short story, he gets a red pony. So that is where the title comes from. It's interesting because like I said, the four short stories, they're all like standalone stories and they were published in different years. And then it wasn't until like the final story that he released them like all together as this book. But yeah, the four sh short stories, they all have the same characters and they're told chronologically. They're just each, you know, a standalone story. But yeah, I really loved this one. I'm debating putting it in literary classic, but then this is a good one to read in school though too, but I feel like I like it more where even if you don't read it in school, this is one you need to check out and that I consider a literary classic. So I think I'm going to stick it in that level. Next up is Cannery Row. This one is actually kind of similar where it, it has more of a plot that flows through all of the chapters more so than The Red Pony, but at the same time, each chapter kind of is just its own story in a way. This one takes place in Cannery Row, which is in Monterey, and it's just these group of men that live in Cannery Row, and like a big part of the story is they're trying to throw a party for this friend of theirs, Doc, who works at the biological lab. You know, like John Steinbeck is known for writing very heavy, serious books, and this one still has that seriousness to it. So considering it's John Steinbeck though, I would say this is one of his more lighthearted books and it has some funny moments throughout. Yeah, Cannery Row, there was just something about it that was just uh, more lighthearted, I would say. But yeah, I really loved this one. And I'm tempted to put it in Great American Novel. That seems kind of high, but I'm doing it. And this one does have a sequel called Sweet Thursday, which I started. But again, I'm in a reading slump. And so even though I loved the prologue, the way it starts out, I absolutely loved it. But then I just had a hard time really getting into it. And I've started so many books this past week and then I just dropped them. <laughs> so Sweet Thursday was one of them that I dropped, but I will be returning to it at a later point and actually reading it. But anyway, next up is The Pearl. This one is a short story novella about a guy who finds a pearl and it's just like a story basically of greed and corruption and what it does to the people around you and as well as yourself and what happens when, you know, you put money above other things. <laughs> And I'm gonna say this one is a school curriculum must because it is well written and I do like it. And the story is kind of cliche in my mind where it's just kind of like 
the downfall of greed and how greed ruins lives. And it's kind of just a cliche story to be told. But John Steinbeck is a fantastic writer and it is a story worth reading. It's just not a personal favorite of mine. Speaking of personal favorites, next up is East of Eden and just straight up, it goes in the top tier. East of Eden is fantastic. It is so, so good. It is one that he considers to be like his magnum opus. And as he was writing this, he felt like every book he had written was leading him to this moment to write East of Eden. And he combines the story of the Trask family, who is a fictional family, combining their story with the story of the Hamilton family, which really is his family. His mother's maiden name is Hamilton. And he himself, as a boy, is like a character in the story and his family members are characters in the story. So he mixes, you know, his own family history with some fiction. And it's just absolutely incredible. Highly, highly recommend. It is so, so good. And I have a book first movie video for it that is like an hour long because I just had so much to say. And yeah, this one... <laughs> is fantastic. I've read it twice, loved it both times. And then we have Of Mice and Men. This one is the one that is commonly read in schools. And this one is about two migrant workers in like the 19th 30s, I believe. Uh, George and Lenny. And yeah, this one is probably his most iconic. Well, actually, yeah, I think this is his most iconic. Like you see so many references and so many skits and so many things referencing George and Lenny and the rabbits and like the mice mouse he has in his pocket at one point and just so much about this you see everywhere. So I would say this is his most iconic. I also think this is like his most depressing one too. So it's kind of funny. This is the one that people read in school because this one, like his books, they do have hope even if they are heavy topics, but this one I feel like has the least amount of hope. And so it is just such a downer. Uh, having said that, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the great American novel. <laughs> it's not necessarily top tier for me, but I did give it five stars, I'm pretty sure. And I did absolutely love it. And you get so sucked in and I read it like in within one day. It's a, again, it's a shorter story, a novella, I guess. And in some ways it does fit with it being the great American novel because it is about a specific time in America. And it's also just how lonely each of these characters are. It's just like so heartbreaking, but anyway, it's fantastic. And then The Long Valley is another series of short stories, which by the way, The Red Pony, those short stories are also in The Long Valley. But since I already ranked The Red Pony separately, The Long Valley, I'm just thinking of the stories that aren't The Red Pony. So I forget how many, but it's quite a few different short stories. And yeah, I really love these ones. These ones have a bit more symbolism in them, I would say, and there's a lot to think about and a lot to wonder. And some of them are kind of odd, but they're all just so good. I'm gonna put this in Great American Novel, which might be weird because it's not a novel. <laughs> it's a series of short stories, but yeah, I just love each of them. And they do kind of, again, focus on maybe the darker side of human nature to some extent, but they're all just so interesting. And like, I said, they have like a lot of th symbolism and Steinbeck isn't someone that I think of as being subtle per se, like East of Eden is symbolic, but it's very obvious what he is going for with the symbolism, right? Like he straight up tells you like, this is what this symbolizes. Whereas in the Long Valley, maybe it's a bit more subtle and it's a bit more is left up to your own interpretation. And yeah, I just loved all of the short stories. They were all so good. Next up, we have The Grapes of Wrath, which life will never be the same. That one is so good. That one again is probably his most famous, like of mice and men, I think might be like the most iconic and quoted and referenced. But then The Grapes of Wrath, I think is what he is most well known for writing. And that of course is about the Dust Bowl, the Great Depression, the migrant workers in California, and specifically about the Joad family and their journey from the Midwest to California and everything that happens. And so it's great historical fiction and capturing that moment in time. And he, John Steinbeck, obviously he was from California and he spent a lot of time with migrant workers and traveling California. And so he just was the issue, issues going on were very close to him and personal to him. And yeah, it's just a fantastic book, amazing characters. And then the historical aspect of it is just really well done too. And then The Winter of Our Discontent, this is one that I read more recently. I think this was, this and Ken Rero are two I read in preparation to going down to Salinas and Monterey. But The Winter of Our Discontent, I did love that one. I think I wasn't I was like beginning to be in a reading slump with this one. So I wasn't in the best headspace because I was having a hard time being motivated to read anything. So I feel like this one almost 
required more of my attention than I was giving it. But having said that, I did love it. You know, it is a, not depressing, but it is kind of a sadder one. But then again, it has that hope in the end specifically and different moments of hope throughout. But yeah, the character arcs on this are really interesting. It's about a guy who lives in New York, I believe. This is like his one of his only books that takes place solely on the East Coast. But yeah, it's about this guy who's um, like 40 years old, late 30s, 40, and he just becomes discontent with his life and his family is discontent content and it's about greed again which is something he seems to write about a lot and yeah and about this man like he comes from like an established family but he feels like he has been disgraced in that family and so it's about him wanting to get back to the old status his family used to have and like being someone who matters and is more important and how his wife sees him and how the town sees him and yeah so this was a really good one I really really liked it and I'm gonna say ooh a uh, great American novel, literary classic. I'm gonna say great American novel. So yeah, obviously. Yeah, I love John Steinbeck books since so many of them are just so high up. But now to do more specific rankings. So least favorite is The Pearl. Then we have The Red Pony, which it makes me sad. This one is like second to last. That makes it seem so low, but this is still a high tier and I did love The Red Pony. And out of these ones, man, this one is tough. I almost want to just keep them in the order they're in. Uh, that might actually be kind of fitting, although I've thought of moving Cannery Row. Man, this is hard because they're all just like tied because they're all so good. Uh, I'm tempted to movie, uh, maybe bump up The Winter of Our Discontent. But then does Cannery Row deserve to be the top? Does that deserve to be number three in terms of Steinbeck books? I did really love Cannery Row though. So part of me is like, yeah, why not? I'll move Winter of Our Discontent above The Long Valley. And we'll just leave it at that. And as far as these two, like, man, this is hard because after I read Grapes of Wrath, I was like, wow, that's amazing. And I like it even better than East of Eden because I'd read East of Eden first back in 2020. But after I read Grapes of Wrath, I was like, wow, this one is my favorite Steinbeck. But then when I reread East of Eden a few months ago, it made me rethink <laughs> whether or not I liked Grapes of Wrath better. So this is really difficult Part of me is tempted to say Grapes of Wrath is the better one, but East of Eden is just so amazing and it's just that family saga. And I love how personal it is to him too. Although Grapes of Wrath, I do love the historical aspect and it is just, both of them are just so beautifully written. Man, this is so tough. And it almost doesn't matter what I say because if right now I list it and I say, yeah, I like Grapes of Wrath better, down the road, I'll probably change my mind. So it's something that I'm gonna flip flop on like forever. Um, I'm just gonna say East of Eden is number one for now. And also the fact that John Steinbeck considers that his first, I think is just kind of interesting. Not that you always have to agree with the author's thoughts, but yeah, so I'll say East of Eden is number one, then Grapes of Wrath, Cannery Row of Mice and Men, The Winter of Our Discontent, The Long Valley, The Red Pony, and the pearl being the last. So yeah, that is my ranking of these John Steinbeck books. Don't forget to comment down below your thoughts. What is your favorite Steinbeck book? If it's between East of Eden and Grapes of Wrath, which one do you prefer? Like, and do you like know without a doubt which one you like best? Cause like I said, I just go back and forth on those two. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go check out my book first movie videos. I have one for East of Eden, Of Mice and Men, uh, The Red Pony, and Of Gra The Grapes of Wrath. Winter of Our Discontent does have a movie with Donald Sutherland. So that would be interesting to watch. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll watch that one sometime and do a book first movie. And again, probably next week is when I'll release the video showing my Steinbeck tour. I went to his house and the museum and everything. So stay tuned for that one next week. Don't forget to uh, give that a watch. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.